So about a week ago, we had some trouble here with the Civic and we could not get the car to start. And it just wouldn't crank over and I could not figure it out for the life of me. As it turns out, it was just my clutch switch, but I didn't know that. So after testing everything I could have possibly tested, the ignition switch and everything else I could have thought of, I found a solution that I could jump the starter and it would start. But then again, I found it was my clutch switch, so I just jumped it, so I don't even need my clutch to start the car anymore. But when I was trying to figure out things, I ordered this. It's a whole switch panel and start button, and I don't care what anyone says, this is the coolest thing. What is going on, guys? I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. As I just said, we couldn't start the car last week, so I ordered this. Figured out the issue, but I still have this, so why not just install it anyways? Because I think this thing is so cool. It really gives that race car aesthetic to the thing, and I don't know, we're gonna try it out. Now I've said things like this before, I don't know a thing about wiring, so I'm following a wiring diagram that this switchboard kind of has. So we're gonna test it out before we actually put it in the car and mount it up because I don't wanna mess anything up, so let's get started. Now for testing purposes, I'm going to be starting is just in the engine bay to make sure I can wire it up correctly before we actually put it inside of the car. Now I know absolutely nothing about wiring, so I did find the wiring diagram for this switch panel online. So hopefully it's like easy. I'm gonna put it on the screen just in case you guys buy the same thing because it's pretty cool. So it looks pretty self-explanatory. So we're just gonna try to send it and see what we can do. So wiring has always kind of freaked me out and I'm not sure if this is right or not, but I'm trying to follow this diagram the best I can. And yes, it looks sloppy. I'll clean it up before I actually put it in the car, but I'm gonna see if this is right. Pretty much this red wire right here is gonna go to a constant battery. So I'll put that on my battery. This yellow one connects to the three on the actual start button. This one connects to my relay switch right here. And then the relay switch, the black connects to the battery as well. And the blue wire would connect to the starter. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but we're gonna test it out and see. I'm gonna take the assumption that this little tab right here needs to be grounded somewhere. So I'm gonna get some more wire and ground that and see, because right now I'm just trying to test if I can get the little light to turn on when I flip this on, which it didn't do. So we're gonna go ground it and see, hopefully that does it. It's definitely wired backwards, but the LED came on, which means that the switch works, but I gotta switch my two powers because it shouldn't be lighting up when it's off because that's gonna drain my battery. So we're getting there. So currently I'm trying to figure this out and maybe something's wrong here or I just have it wired up bad. But when I plug this into the battery and I ground it and then I plugged it into my relay, the start button should also be lighting up and it's not. So I don't know why that is. Maybe these wires are just backwards and need to switch them or maybe there's more plugs in here that I gotta figure out. So I'm gonna try to figure it out. <laughs> If you're an electrician, I advise you to click away right now. I found out how to make the button actually light up. So pretty much you just have to jump the positives and then the negatives and then it works. So not that bad. And I think I do want to go to the store and actually get actual connections for this instead of just using tape and stuff. But all I got to do now really is put this back in and then wire to the starter and see if it actually works. Cause I'm pretty sure it's going to work now. Now the next thing we gotta do is power the button so we run, or the relay, so we put the black wire to a constant 12 volt and put the blue wire on the starter and then in theory, it should crank. Again, everything I'm doing right now is just for testing purposes and I'm not leaving it like this because this doesn't seem safe with all the exposed wire. So we are just gonna see if we can touch it and make it work. If it does, then we can properly put it in the car. It'll be easier to ground it that way too. Now just run it into whatever screws are in there and just run a longer wire. So hopefully this works. So I got all the lights to work when I flip the switch on. But other than that, I have no clue what I'm doing still. And I'm trying to wire it directly to the starter, but I can't get it to start. This is uh, definitely above my pay grade. <laughs> so far, the only thing I've figured out is this part. I don't even want to admit how long I've been working on this either, just to try to get this to work. See, I could completely wire this inside of the car and tap into wires, and that probably would make it a lot easier. But I'm also just trying to test it right now and see if I can get it to work, which I obviously can't. So maybe just putting it in the car might be the better option. After some perseverance and trying, I figured it out. All we had to do was ground the black wire on the relay, 
put the blue wire to the post that's in the plug and press the button and it starts up. So now that I know that it works, I know how it works, it's gonna be a matter of how I actually wanna set this up now because since I do have my key working, I don't need to set the starter up right now. But I can still sweat, set everything else up to make it do other things. And that's the beauty of having a switch panel. So I wanna run like things like underglow eventually. I know this car's gonna be really ricey eventually, but whatever. And that's gonna be perfect for running my underglow. So now we're gonna mount it inside the car, wire it up. I'm not gonna wire it to the starter because we don't need to but I can show you guys how to do it if you guys want to now I'm gonna show you guys the actual panel and I'm going to explain it how I wired it so you guys know how to wire it pretty much this bottom one is your ground right here and you're gonna have to ground that also to the button itself so that way the LEDs work this is your constant power so this one goes straight to your battery this is another constant this is your your accessory power so when you flip the switch everything turns on this will go to the bottom side of this so the LED will turn on and yeah then the other one wraps around goes into the four for that button to actually turn on then the red one goes into the relay black gets grounded blue goes to your starter I hope I explained that correctly and I hope you guys know what I mean by that so pretty much you just have to make sure there's power going to it so when you flip the switch it turns everything on and then it goes to the relay and the thing I was doing wrong before was that black wire is just a grounded so I'm gonna put up that wiring diagram again and if you follow it it actually does make a lot of sense that black wire right there is supposed to be a ground it's not a constant power like I thought I'm not an electrician so I don't know these things but we are gonna throw this inside the car now and I am gonna try to power it up but I'm not gonna connect the starter to it yet again because I really don't need to right now but I probably will eventually so my plan is to put the switch panel in this spot right here because it's empty but I have to remove this part because um, yeah, it's obviously broken anyways so I'm gonna try to figure out how to take this part off and I'm gonna mount it to this back plate right in here and I think it's gonna look pretty cool and for ease of use here I am unplugging pretty much all of it except for this one because it's just easier and they do sell the connectors for this for these little plugs at like AutoZone or even Home Depot so I probably will pick up those before I wire this all completely in because it just looks better and it's cleaner and it's probably a lot safer than having exposed wires. Kind of cool to find out that the whole thing comes out like that as I actually didn't know so the plan is to have the switch panel in this little gap and I don't know what originally goes in that gap but you know we have a gap there so kind of kind of planning on it going like this because I think that looks pretty cool like that I already know there's gonna be comments about saying well I'm ruining the interior of this car good thing it's my car not yours I can do whatever I want to my interior and destroy it if I want. <laughs> this cup holder is like so gross and it's been broken for a long time. So I just time to close down. But I'm trying to figure out how to take this out like the most like non-abrasive way and not try to break it. But I might just have to break it out because I can't figure it out. I had this great idea of using my Dremel to like Dremel everything out and make it smooth and nice. But then I realized I only have this one bit and it's messed up. And I think during the move I lost the entire box of bits. So that was a pointless 10 minutes trying to find my Dremel stuff.
There's definitely gonna be a part like two to this video of me actually cleaning up the setup, but I think having it like this looks really cool. The only problem is that I found out that my ground is covered by the plastic on this. So I'm gonna have to make a workaround around that because I kinda need that ground wire there. That's uh, not gonna work right there. So once I figure that part out, we can actually throw her in the car and power her up. So since this bracket is all metal, I just grounded it to this bracket and then that'll be connected to the chassis of the car. So the last thing we gotta do is run a power cable and I'm going to test it by putting this in the car and running a long wire to the battery to see if it actually works right. So my original plan of how I wanted to ground it didn't work. So I kind of just stuck the wire in the pinch weld. So it's kind of just, but that works like that. So again, this video is explaining the wiring of it. I showed how you can start the car with it and I'm gonna put it in the car and I'm gonna do it the proper way eventually, but I wanna make sure I have all the right stuff for it. I wanna make sure I have the right connectors so it's not sketchy. So I'm gonna put everything back together. I'm gonna to try to secure that ground a little bit better and then I have a cool idea. Now, as I said, this isn't wired up fully, and I'm not gonna wire it up fully today because one, we're running out of daylight. It's disgusting of how many mosquitoes there are out here, but the way we have this right now is if I just run a power to it, this will work fully. Um, I don't have the relay plugged into it, which is why the start button actually doesn't do anything. That was a good little trick I did on you guys though. But all you gotta do is just wire this up so the black goes to the ground, the red goes to the switch, and the blue goes to the starter, and that will fully work. So we are going to get some actual proper connections for it so we can actually make it like professional and not sketchy at all. But guys, I think it looks so cool in there. We'll definitely be doing a part two because I wanna make a bracket for it so it fills in the empty gaps. I wanna actually hook it up to the starter to make it start the car. And you know, I just wanna overall make it a cleaner experience with it. The cup holder I wanna trim up so I need to get some Dremel bits and I just wanna make it all clean. And then obviously I need to tuck all my wires so it's not all, all over the place. But guys, I think this install looks really cool it filled in that empty gap the cup holder was broken regardless so don't say anything about the lid of it because it wasn't gonna work I think this is super cool might be a little bit ricey but very very race car I've been seeing this switch everywhere on Amazon and again the reason I got the switch if you guys didn't understand what I was saying the first time was I could not get the car to crank and the reason the car wouldn't crank was because my clutch switch went and I didn't even know the little rubber pad broke so I ended up just jumping it so I don't even need the clutch anymore to start the car but the reason I bought the start button was because that was gonna be my workaround. So since we found the workaround, this also is kind of a workaround too, if you ever have kind of any sort of issue that you can crank the starter but not start the car. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and I hope there's some takeaways. So guys, do me a few things. Comment, like, subscribe, keep doing the fun stuff, keep doing you, stay motivated. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and peace. And before I go actually, one question. I have three switches and I have no clue what to do with any of them. I want to do Underglow eventually, so I guess I do know what I'm going to do with one of them. But I got two other switches, so if you guys have any good ideas, let me know. I might rewire my fans to them, but we'll see. So, catch you guys next time.